Hello everyone, I am Hassan Wahbe, and this presentation is about LED-based light source for endoscopy. First of all, we'll talk about an introduction, a general background, and a light source diagram. Second, we'll talk about the switched mode PS, power source, fly back and forward converters, buck and boost converters, and we'll talk about the LED drive board and the type of the white LED we will use. As a general background, we have several types of light sources for endoscopy, halogen, hexanon, and LED. So the best choice for us is the LED, of course, since it has many advantages over the others. It, have, uh, it has the maximum lifetime, more than 20,000 hour. It's small in size and allow a great of manipulation for various shapes, very low energy consumption, and brighter than the others. As for the project main block diagram, of course, we'll have the power line cord powering the isolated SMPS, which will give a power to the LED drive that will power up the LED. It will play as a role as a, a current source that will power the LED, and it will go to the fiber optic. And of course, here's the Raspberry Pi and the touch screen is to control the brightness, the setting of the LED drive board. SMPS. We have different types of SMPS, and one of its advantage, it has a high frequency, high efficiency, less heat generation, compact and small in size. Several types, isolated, we have push, which pull converter, flyback converter, non-isolated buck and boost converter, and both of them. As for the flyback converter, it's mainly for power energy output less than 100 watt, while forward power converter is for applications that may that wants more output power more than 100 watts. That's why we go to the forward power converter. It has a more efficiency. It costs a little bit more. So as for the forward power converter, when the switch is turned on, the voltage appeared as the secondary winding transformer. D3 is a forward bias, hitting the low pass filter which is connected to the load. In this case, D4 will not conduct, and the maximum received output will be V equal Vn times the number of turns the secondary winding of the number of turns of the primary winding. Here's that D1 and D2 is an internal loop for uh, to avoiding the magnetizing current that happens in the transformer at the primary winding of the transformer it when the, it is off the current will pass through d1 then through the vg and again to d2 it is to prevent it from going to the other side the lc filter here is the simulink forward power converter model as we said here is the primary and secondary. The third is to manipulate the output voltage. The MOSFET, or in this case, the IGBT, is controlled by a power voltage regulator. We have two inputs for this power voltage regulator, the desired voltage output we want, and the loop, closed loop, from the voltage measurement in order to calculate the difference between them. Here is the result. The current is 8.3 ampere, and the voltage V out is 12, which will give us a 100 watt output. As for the voltage control feedback system, number one will be the desired input voltage, and here number two to the negative will be the voltage output. The subtractor will give us the Difference between them, the error, the PID will provide the PWM generator with a duty cycle 
specific and depending on the error, previous error, the PWM generator will fed the IGBT switching mode on and off in order to control the V output. GBT 14 white LED. So we have, we have different types of LEDs. Why do we choose this type? First of all, let's get back to the beginning. We have a fiber optic. So the default parameters of fiber optic default diameter is from three to five millimeter. So approximately the area of this fiber optic will be around 14 millimeters square. So we want an LED with an emission area, circular emission area with 14 millimeter square that we will, it will fed this fiber optic. That's why we go to the CBT 14 watt LED. The 14 right here means that its emission area is 14 millimeter square. Of course, we will need between the LED and the fiber optic an optical system made out of lenses in order to transfer the maximum output illumination into the fiber optic. So its input voltage is 3.6 volt and a current range from 1 into 28 ampere. That's why we need a buck converter as a LED drive in order to in order to decrease the voltage from 12 volt into 3.6 volt constant input to this LED. Also, we need a buck converter as a current source in order to, in order to provide from one ampere until the, its maximum of 28 ampere. So that's why we go to the buck converter LM3433 Let's provide an ampere of 4 ampere till 20 ampere. It's from Texas Instrument. It will cost you guys about uh, 20 bucks, 200 bucks. And it is, uh, we can manipulate or we can set the output current, output elimination by two ways, by the potentiometer right here and by the PWM pin right here it will provide a 3.6 volt and of course the LED maximum power is 100 watt. A 3.6 times its maximum 28 will give us a 100 watt. So how is the working principle of a buck converter? First of all, we have two ways, the on and off. When switch is turned on, it will charge the LC circuit, but when the switch is turned off, the voltage across the inductor charges the capacitor and power the load. Simulink model right here, it's combining both the forward converter and the buck converter. So right here we have a 100 watt output from the forward converter into the buck converter, a 3.5 an 8.3 ampere and a 12 volt output feeding the buck converter. The buck converter, of course, we are uh, controlling its voltage output and we are controlling its current output by a PWM mechanism. I just applied a MOSFET switching high frequency switching MOSFET parallel to the output by controlling its switching frequency with a current controller, of course, similar to the before, we have a desired input current. Here it's 40. And the closed loop from the current measurement sensor. And the error between them will be calculated and will be as an input to the PID controller that plays a role in specifying the duty cycle to the PWM generator to control the on-off switching of this MOSFET right here. So of course the output current will be a pulses. Here is a 
out is an output current down here with a duty cycle of 0 0.1. So I want an output of 3 ampere out of 30 and a voltage of 3.6 volt input. Another result, another simulation, at right here it's a duty cycle of 0 0.5. So I want a uh, current output of a desired current of 15 ampere. That's why it's 0 0.5 on, 0 0.5 off. The duty cycle, the pulse is, is moving from maximum of 30 till zero and getting up. Also, the V out is still remains the same, 3.6. And here is at maximum duty cycle one, a 30 ampere output. So if you guys want to get a 30 ampere, a 30 ampere buck converter in order to control the LED, you can guys go to Texas Instrument and get this model TPS92641. Another way to control the output illumination of the LED output current by using a potentiometer right here. So of course, as we increase its variable resistance as the current will decrease at the output. So I control the input of this uh, resistance by a current reference and a control current control. The current control is, is uh, a mathematical control model right here. It's based on Ohm's law. So of course, one over a current times 3.6, which is the voltage will give us the resistance depending on the current that I want. And thank you all, goodbye.